Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Awesome chat, part of awesomecast.net. Here at Alpha Lab once again, we're going to be talking with Gridwise and see what you guys are doing for uh, for, for the drivers in ride sharing. But first, please go check us out. Like I said, awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the Awesome Chat and the Awesome Cast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course the video versions on YouTube and the Facebook. Check everything out. And of course, join the main show live every Tuesday, live.awesomecast.net, about 7 p.m. Eastern in time uh, over there with the chat room, Facebook Live, whatever video we decide to be using this week, right? Because we're kind of experimenting a bit. So uh, I'm here with uh, one of the guys from Gridwise. Introduce yourself. Yeah, well, thanks for thanks for having me on the show today. Uh, my name is Ryan Green. I'm actually uh, one of the co-founders of Gridwise. Uh, what we do is uh, we provide an intelligence platform for ride share and taxi drivers that allows us to provide uh, predictive and real-time insights to the drivers to increase their efficiency and profitability on the road. Awesome. So this is for the drivers. This is now I know, you know, I know a little bit about the driver side of like, say, Uber and Lyft, and they're already giving you like, you know, surge and, and hey, uh, uh, there's a Pirates game coming up, you know, watch out for it. So how, what does your platform give beyond what these platforms are already giving their, their drivers? Yeah, good question. Uh, so even uh, through my experience of even driving part time as an Uber driver, is we've seen that the current sources that drivers have, uh, let's say like surge, surge information that's out there from Uber and Lyft, it's very instantaneous. It's, mm-hmm. It causes you to be very reactive. Uh, you don't really know what's going on ahead of time. And one of the rookie mistakes that a lot of drivers make is uh, surge chasing. So they'll actually, they'll be, let's say like we're here in East Liberty right now. There's a surge over in the south side. Uh, what will happen is uh, a driver will actually try to go catch a surge over there. And by the time they get there, it disappears. Because it, it should be more the strategy. You want to kind of be where the surge is going to happen, right? You want to be where, it's like tornado chasing. You want to go where the conditions are right for a tornado to be <laughs> happening so you can catch it. That's what a surge is kind of like, right? Exactly. It, it's somewhat like that. But even then, it's it's more, we, we don't want to label ourselves as a surge predictor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, if you're in the right place at the right time, that's great. But it's really we're fo- fo- focused on forecasting demand, where the demand is going to be at different times, and also just increasing transparency in the overall market. As we see that drivers don't have sufficient tools to make smart decisions on the road. Uh, there's just a lack of transparency. I mean, these companies have great data that they could expose to the drivers and help them out a little more. Uh, but they're just not doing that right now. And that's where we see an opportunity in the market. That's great. And, and, and this is one of those things where um, I'm kind of interested because, you know, again, like Uber and Lyft, they have their systems. I, I know they're giving a lot of a lot of information out there. And you guys are kind of like a tack on to that, right? Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about how you're delivering that information to your clients right now. Yeah, great. Uh, so, so in terms of the delivery is we've tended to be pretty lean. Uh, first mm-hmm. off is uh, our first initial product uh, is being, has been sent to the drivers through uh, two, two different options. Is one is we send out a weekly forecast uh, through email. So if you think of a weather forecast, you have the seven day forecast as we call ours a demand forecast. <laughs> Uh, so Which we, I signed up for it, and I got I got one, and I was like, "Oh, my weather thing is in." Or I don't remember signing up for a weather email, and I'm like, "Oh, oh, okay." <laughs> like, like you, you get got to go watch out for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so what we do in there is is we for give you the drivers a seven day outlook of mm-hmm. what's going on in terms of airport traffic, what the schedule patterns look like, uh, what are the relevant events for the drivers that are going on, uh, more than you know what some of these companies are actually providing them right now. Uh, and anything else that's really relevant to them uh, to know about ahead of time as they're being able to plan out their schedule for the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, how we complement that is through real-time text alerts. So we integrate with a system that allows us to send text alerts directly to the drivers, directly to their phone, uh, and, and we really focus on telling them things of or updating them on when events are going to be ending or based off of you know in, what we're seeing in our back-end system you know, this area of, let's say, the North Shore is going to be peaking in demand in the next 30 minutes due to X, Y, Z factor of of what's going on. It could be events ending or something like that. Events ending, uh, yeah, really a lot of the 
conferences could be conferences going on a, a couple of different things in terms of some happy hours or festivals. Um, but also we, we try to tie in the airport information there as well. Uh, airport um, Uber actually provides a, a queue to its drivers when they're out at the airport. And sometimes drivers will actually send us that information of like, all right, well, the queue's actually at 30 drivers right now. So if we know that there's arrivals that are peaking at, you know, within the next hour, we can throw in that queue number in there as well. And so what we've actually seen is a lot of drivers are tending to crowdsource information to us and, and say that, hey, make sure you let drivers know about this that's going on. And there's, it's, it's ironic you would think that it's more of a cutthroat uh, market between the drivers, but there's a great sense of camaraderie, which has mm -hmm. been a, uh, something that we've learned over the past two months of having this product out. As a driver, you're one of, you know, I, I'm guessing hundreds of drivers here in, in Pittsburgh in the area. So it, it's in, uh, hopefully they get, you know, kind of like Waze, right? Like Waze has gotten better and better over the years and is my choice because everybody contributes to it, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's getting that information and bringing that out. If the system gets better, it's better for them to make money on the system in the end, right? Exactly. So we, whereas Waze is like, it's, if the system gets better, I can get around town a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the long mm -hmm. run. So that's that's great. That's great. So um, you guys are an Alpha Lab company here. What attracted you to this program? Well, I would say is uh, so. I actually moved here about a year and a half ago, and really started to. I learned pretty quick of you know how Pittsburgh is really starting to become this this hub for startups and technology, and just getting out and networking. Is I I heard about Alpha Lab pretty quick, and it just really it sparked my interest as I've always. An entrepreneur, I had started a company before this, and was looking to really get into, you know, uh, start a foundation here in Pittsburgh and see what would help me, you know, get a company off the ground with some ideas that I was working on, being, you know, this gridwise. Yeah. Uh, so it was uh, really attracted me is just the program itself is just how like the the company track record, some of the companies that have come through here, uh, which really uh, I think instilled some credibility for what they've done. Uh, and just you go around town and a lot of people who are in the startup community, I mean, they'll t everyone talks about Alpha Lab. And uh, so that was really uh, put that on the my radar. And I was really just always looking more into to seeing what's going on. I went to Demo Day for the first time. Uh, the first one I went to was last year. And that was really sparked my interest. Was it the big one down at Stage AE? That was the Stage AE impressive. One. Yeah, I, I, I love seeing how big they've gotten there. Uh, we're talking to Jim Jens about how they, they were... Um, you know, in that little space on the south side when they started Demo Day, and now it's like this giant thing, you know. Uh, so, you know, same stage where, like, Marilyn Manson plays, you know. That's, <laughs> that's cool, you know. No big deal. Right? <laughs> yeah, no big deal. No big deal, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it's a really good thing. So where were, where was your product kind of at the start, like, when, when, when you were, you know, applying for Alpha Lab, got into the program versus mm -hmm. where it is today? So I would say our product was, um, I had, like, I had initially, when an, I came up with the idea, it was like, well, I see this problem out there, let's test it and see if other drivers have this problem out in the market. And so I, I honestly created landing pages that made it look like a real product and would have people, I would market it through channels across the country that would target drivers and they would go through, they would sign up, they would go through a pricing pricing, uh, pricing checkout and then they would go to a land, uh, thank you page that would say, well, we're still under development, but if you'd like, give us our, your feedback. And through that, there was like a week where I got like 500 drivers in that week, and I was able to learn from all of them and talk to a lot of them, get feedback, even through the surveys. And that was kind of where, that was like my traction me metric, and that validated the demand mm -hmm. for the idea and really revealed the problem. Uh, so like going into Alpha Lab, that was some of my big selling points. Like, look, I've, I've proved this out through a simple way. I didn't have to go through and create you know, spend fifty thousand dollars in developing something. It's just like I spent, you know, a hundred dollars and and did this, and so that was kind of where it was. And it was really, I think, at that point, it was just about showing momentum. It was like I was by myself at that time, and I was uh, along that road. I met my my co-founder, who I'm working with now, uh, and we were just really trying to show that momentum over time. Of you know, mm -hmm. this is something like as we started here we proved out the demand and we just started developing and really focused on more of the research and talking to drivers at that point point. and it feels like you mentioned about you guys are pretty lean with emails and 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 uh texts and i'm like oh that's a real kind of low text gets out low tech gets out to everybody it feels like a lot of companies will start with an app and you're like oh god i need an app 
you know. But, uh, you know, talk a little bit about that philosophy of deciding to do that versus an app. And I know you have something in the works as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have an app in, in the works, but it's, it's kind of the, the lean methodology uh, that's, that's definitely prominent in the startup world today, but a lot of people still make that same mistake of focusing too much on building out this, their grand vision on the first take and, and losing all this time of getting to their customers. So right. for us, it was important to, like we had to, t we almost went down that path. I will say that we, we had a, an app, app mock-ups of you know, where we were going. We had these heat maps and all these cool things that we wanted to create. And we kind of humbled ourselves when we took a step back and we were just like, this is going to take us a while to build this. So it's like, what can we do to get to our customers the fastest to where we're not just, you know, collecting leads, but we're actually adding value to the drivers and learning of how they like to see these insights and what is actually valuable to them and mm -hmm. is it helping them make more money? Because the information is the most important part here and that part of it, right? Exactly. So. It is. The, the information is the most important part and the way that you display it uh, is, mm -hmm. is very important. So nailing that initially is going to, you know, that's going to transfer into an app. So it's like at some point you're going to have to do that. So the things that we're doing are stepping stones to get to enhanced technology that allow us to do some more exciting things. And a little bit I know about app development, like changing those kinds of things in process while the app is out there is probably a little more difficult to like, ah, let's do this different next week on the email, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little different uh, process to a uh, little more overhead overhead that goes into that. But it's definitely um, definitely like for the email is is allowed us to be very nimble and quick in what we're doing. So that's been pretty great for us. Is drivers will give us feedback, and it's something that you can just change and write it instantaneously if you feel like it's reason, uh, that was smooth by the way i don't know if i'll include this later but it's, <laughs> i'm answering the question and i'm grabbing my phone that's uh that's answer. like a place startup you know like like this is how busy i am excuse me uh it's, I, I see what you did there um <laughs> so you try to be smooth man. so uh, i talked to you guys the other day uh, both of you guys are, are driving um for both services right uber and lyft uber yeah. and lyft mm -hmm. were you drivers beforehand or did you, did you just kind of add on to be part of this process and 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 get into it more. Yeah, I was I was actually a driver. So I was in the military and I was driving part time for Uber just to get some extra cash. Yeah, and uh, as you do. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like yeah, everyone yeah. that I'm like, so how'd you get in this? I'm like, oh, this is a side thing. This is a side thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's uh, it was it was a great uh, great way to to make uh, turn turn some cash. I mean, pressing a button and uh, to start work is mm -hmm. is something still very uh very new in the world, but it's it's. It's nice. It's a very great convenience, but it was uh, something we were we had the perspective of less uh, before coming into this idea. So that definitely tied into this is that problem founder fit of understanding the driver market before mm -hmm. even getting into this product. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, and it's definitely, it is an interesting thing because it, there's a lot of opportunity out there like this. Like, I mean, I, we're, we're getting to a world where, like, I, I, I saw an app that I can have a mechanic come to my house and fix my car <laughs> or at work or something like that. Like like this kind of like crazy on demand. And we're going to be talking to somebody else here who's doing something with hairstyle in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, a, it's a different world. It's a different world. Um, so uh, so where can people sign up and what's what's kind of the, you know, First, pro, you know, what, what, what's coming up? What's the, what's the expectation out of that app, for one thing? Yeah, the, well, the first version of the app is really centralizing the current features that we offer. So it's like you have decentralization of an email and the text messages. Right. So we're really just taking what we offer in there, combining those, and creating some enhanced features around there. So drivers are actually going to be able to have an app. They'll open it, and they'll be able to see in real time what the airport traffic looks like how many people are coming in at the different times of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to see more of the events that are going on, the attendance of those events, uh, in, in addition to receiving those real-time alerts. Is that was, that's what I thought was interesting. And so, again, you don't have to do the app, and I think you're going to be on, you said Android first, correct? Android initially. Yeah. Android initially. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't need to be on that to take advantage of the service. But, again, I'm looking at the email, and I'm first of all, there's conferences here in Pittsburgh where I'm like, that's a thing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, but, again, you're like, you don't know, like, oh, this is a thing happened in a coffee shop. There'll be, like, 10 people versus this is a thing that's, like, maybe in a room at the convention center, right? Like, you, you can get a better idea of that, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. Instead of kind of, ah, I don't know. I don't know what, if that's an event that's actually going to have much service to it. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things is as a driver and, and going out and doing this manually is having to sift through 
mm -hmm. lot of those and being blinded by, you know, what's behind that is, like, you know, how many people are going there or even like, what is the capacity of this venue? Yeah. Uh, and that's what we really, you know, take the is time the to, to help. Is it the kind those. of audience that's going to take Uber? Too exactly like, is another yeah. question. Mm -hmm. You know, this could be a bus kind of crowd. You know, or this yeah. could be a walk kind of crowd. You don't know. So yeah. exactly, and, and that's that's definitely something is uh, we're focused on. Is this uh, is this a place where you know maternity mothers are doing yoga, or is this uh, <laughs> or are people drinking here and yeah. this is alcohol related event? I mean, mm -hmm. you can do the math on which one's going to produce right. more Uber Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So awesome. So where can people sign up again? People can sign up at Gridwise.io. Uh, it's very easy. You go on the website, you sign up, you give your name, uh, email, phone number, zip code, and you're ready to go. You start receiving the text and the email. Awesome. A really cool platform, helping drivers make more money and make sure they're there when you need them, to be quite honest. Uh, so I hope see for you guys that are just, just taking the Uber, taking the Lyft, or whatever the case may be. Um, so please go check them out. Uh, check out all the shows over at awesomecast.net. We're having a lot of great talks here with Alpha Lab and a lot of other companies and startups here in the Pittsburgh area. Is there anybody we're missing? Is there a company out there doing really cool, awesome stuff that you think we should be talking to in the area? Let us know at uh, awesomecast on the Twitter, awesomecast on the Facebook as well. Thank you to my awesome guest to tell us about his awesome company. Thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.